Ita for not joining in on my town's search party for a missing 18 year old girl even though it got me a school suspension. I used to be very close friends with this girl, we're more of acquaintances now but we still stay in touch sometimes. Her mom reported her as a missing person all over town and on the town's community pages of Facebook. The police post included that she's not been seen since she left voluntarily from her mother's residence. I texted her asking if she's seen the news, and apparently she hasn't. Told her about how she's been reported as a missing person and that everyone is looking for you. She said that she cut contact with her mom and has her own apartment now, and that she made it clear to her mom that she was leaving. I told her that we should let the police know that you're safe so they can call off the search. The next day also after getting that information from my friend, we went to the police station to call off the search party since it was a mistake that she was missing. She explained to them about how she moved away from her mom so she was never actually missing. Later that day I saw some update posts from the police on Facebook and some other posts that she was discovered to be safe and that there was some confusion about whether she was actually missing or not. Well, people in the comments got upset that she wasn't brought back home to her mom, so now they're all doing their own individual search party to look for this 18 year old girl. I told everyone in the comments that I know her and that she made it clear to her mom that she was moving out, and that I saw her at her apartment the other day perfectly fine. Then I got a bunch of comments coming back at me saying I should be ashamed of myself and that a child her age is not capable of being out on their own and that I should give them her apartment address. What are they gonna do? break down her door. Even at school staff have been saying things to me here and there about how I should knock some sense into my friend. My friend and I are still in high school, I think it's weird they're all talking to me behind her back as if she doesn't know what she's doing. And then another thing is that her mom posted a comment under the police report saying just to give some advice to parents out there please, please. Please keep some sort of tracking device on your kids' phones that will track them even if the phone is turned off. I wish to god I would've done one on underscore, even though her daughter left willingly. Told everyone that but I got more replies of you don't know if she really did. Someone could've influenced her to leave her mom. It gets worse, I got an in-school suspension, a suspension that lasts two to three days but I stay in a reflection room all day long because I was helping slash encouraging a runaway. How does that even relate to what I do in school? Her being away from home doesn't have anything to do with me other than I'm friends with her and know about her situation and respect her decisions. I'm still not going to give anything up because I believe I'm not in the wrong here but now everyone is against me. They're not being helpful either because the school principals keep pulling her out of class to talk to her. Because a lot of people asked, I live in the US. NTA. Unless this girl has reduced mental capability, she's not a child anymore. She's an adult, and doesn't need protected or rescued. What the fuck is up with this stupid ass town? I really can't comprehend this shit. Is the whole community dumb? Definitely NTA. I don't understand how everyone is somehow blaming you. You literally helped more than anyone else in this story. You located the girl made sure she was safe realized that she hadn't been missing then you both informed the police so they could let everyone know that the girl wasn't missing after all and is safe. To me it sounds like the girl's parents are overly controlling and have convinced their friends slash school staff of a different story, one where you're helping hide a runaway. As far as the suspension, I'd contact your school board immediately regarding that because there's so much wrong with that, that I barely know where to start. First off, even if their accusations were true that you were encouraging a runaway, which clearly isn't the case. You can't be punished for things that both happen outside of the school property and doesn't have any effect on the school. Second, you can't be suspended for the actions of another student, plain and simple. They can get in legal trouble for this, so if they want to get all huffy about that, a quick mention that you'll get a free consultation with a lawyer and run it by them, should shut the school staff up. Third, since they gave you a suspension for encouraging a runaway, that's going to be permanently noted on your record. That right there is both slander and defamation of character, 
both illegal and can have some serious consequences for the school and the staff that put that on record. Basically not only are you not the asshole, but you also have a fairly solid case for legal action to be taking against the school and the staff that are, as far as the law would see it, harassing you. I will say I'm no lawyer, but I do have a few family members who are lawyers, so I'm somewhat familiar with how things work and yeah I can say for sure a lawyer would love to have this case because it's what they'd call an open and shut case, meaning very easy to win. WTF did I just read? When did we stop counting 18 years olds as adults that can make their own decisions? I moved out at 17 and never looked back. Your NTA for protecting your friend and her wishes. NTA. You should challenge the suspension with your school and the school board. You can call lawyers to ask for advice. You may find one willing to give a free consultation. Your friend is an adult and unless there are laws where you live that give guardianship of 18 year olds who are still in high school to their parents, no one has any business telling your friend where to live. I'm wondering where the op's parents are in this because the school is overstepping its bounds. The op's friend is an adult. Her friend's mom sounds controlling. When the friend went to the police and the police stepped back. Op's parents need to fight the school on this because op did nothing wrong. Ita for locking my daughter's diary. Ita for placing a lock on my, 41, daughter's, 11, diary so my wife, 36, would stop reading it. There was a recent post about a father who discovered his wife had been reading their child's diary without her knowledge and the father wanted to tell his daughter the truth. I, naively, shared this story with my wife to gain her insight and I thought we were on the same page. I was wrong. For simplicity I'll start calling daughter A and wife K. About a week ago K revealed to me that she had been reading A's diary because she was worried about her mental health. Honestly I think she was concerned because they had started talking to a counselor and wouldn't share what was said during those sessions. She found out that A was very angry with her and is not handling this info very well. I told K that I was incredibly disappointed and this was a serious invasion of privacy. She was obviously upset that I didn't agree but was completely unrepentant about her actions and said she had no intention of stopping. So I bought a lock and told her it was to keep her older brother, 13, and little sister, 6, out of it. I did not mention her mother, I just can't bring myself to tell her. My wife now thinks Eta because she just wants to gain insight into A's mental health and I believe she should sit down and have an honest conversation. So Reddit what do you think? Reddit, first I want to thank everyone who contributed to this post. Your well wishes did not go unnoticed, your advice was taken to heart and your stories have opened my eyes to so much that needs to change in my house. The awards were humbling and greatly appreciated. I hope there was some catharsis for those that shared and please know my heart hurts for you all. My wife and I have begun talking about attending therapy ourselves. I think she may have noticed the lock and gotten the message, I don't know for sure. I am going to sit them both down and we are going to go over a lot of the advice here. I also want to thank those that offered the harshest criticism. You gave me some of the greatest clarity. I love my wife for all her imperfections and she loves me with mine so I think it's worth the fight. NTA. And as someone who had their parents read my personal writings, thank you. Your daughter's privacy is important, and having someone read something personal is a huge breach of trust. And like you've said, if your wife is that concerned about your daughter's mental health she can talk to her about it. Edit, I just wanted to say to everyone commenting about their own stories of having their trust broken and privacy violated. I'm sorry that happened to you, and I know some will never get over it. I hope things are better for you all now, and you have someone that you can trust that makes you feel comfortable and listen to. Also, thank you everyone for all of the awards, this is so sweet of you all. I wish every one of you a good day, and for good things to come to you all. Smile. NTA. Agree that it's an invasion of privacy. If the daughter ever found out it'll lead to serious trust problems. If mom wants insights then she should do the adult thing and communicate with daughter. It's a valuable lesson for both to learn. 
NTA. I heavily disagree with the notion that she can remain unbiased and gain true insight into your daughter's mental health by reading her diary. As a child who had her diaries read countless times and had the information used against me, it did nothing but cause huge mistrust in being able to safely vent but also communicate with my parents at all. I started writing in Pig Latin and then the Dwarven runes from Lord of the Rings before finally giving up altogether. It was mentally exhausting having to find ways to just be able to deal with feelings and emotions that my parents didn't respect. You're being a good parent, and your wife needs to learn she's being sneaky, and not teaching what trust and good communication are. I'm so sorry you had to go through so much effort just to protect you private thoughts and feelings. I have no doubt it was extremely exhausting. My wife and I grew up is very different households. My privacy was respected and I always felt comfortable coming to them with my problems. My wife suffered a narcissistic mother and a codependent father so she never had privacy or emotional stability. I hope things have improved for you. NTA. Your wife was being sneaky. If she was truly worried about your daughter's mental health, she could have gone to A or the counselor and asked short of telling me things that violate patient confidentiality, what can I do to help A's mental health be better? And then bam, problem solved. Communication happens and problems are addressed. How dare you suggest proper parenting methods? Ita for walking out with my girls when my mill excluded them from family photo album. I'm 36 mother of two girls, nine fifths. I met my now fiance, 38, 2.5 years ago. He's a good man, treats my girls well and loves them. Future mother-in-law is a generous lady truth be told. His family are respectful and helpful. We visit them a lot. After we got engaged I pretty much considered this my extended family. However my mother-in-law tends to do things that either intentionally or unintentionally hurt my feelings for example, when there's a family dinner at a restaurant we're not invited. On Christmas my girls didn't receive anything from her while other kids in the family got gifts and cards. Also all the kids in the family get a trip once a month but my girls never participate. Mother-in-law excuses where I forgot. This week, my future mother-in-law was doing family photo album and was gathering family pictures from everyone. Syl and her kids slash brother-in-law and his kids and so on. She called and asked if I could send her some pictures. Thought that was nice of her. I sent them pretty much after my call with her ended. We were invited to her house. The entire family was there to look at the photo album BC it was complete. We took turns to look at it. And when it was mine and my girl's turn I was stunned. Turned out she picked the pictures that had just me and her son, not my girls. Although we took a ton of pictures, the four of us my girls were excited wanting to see the album then asked why their pictures weren't there. I didn't even want to think about how they'd feel. I was caught off guard otherwise I wouldn't have let them look at the album. I asked Mill why she excluded my girls and she didn't even reply she just ignored me. My fiancé stared at me. I felt awful I got up took my girls and walked out immediately. Everyone was confused. My fiancé followed us then we left. At home he told me that I really shouldn't have walked out before dinner and should have just ignored this whole thing because who cares about a stupid photo album. I told him it's a symbol of family. The girls felt left out when all the kids pictures were there except for the girls although I sent her pics of four of us as a family. He said his mom didn't mean it and promised that this will change once we get married and said he'll get everyone in line so I shouldn't even consider this a problem. And that my girls are the light of his life and that's the only thing that matters, and that I was overreacting over a photo album. Mother-in-law called and was upset saying me walking out like that was disrespectful to the entire family. When I told her about what she did, she bluntly said I don't wanna lie to people those girls don't relate to me in any way she said she loves them slash treat them well. We'll host their birthdays if I want but she won't call them family. I argued with her over this and I hung up on her since she didn't think she did anything wrong. Was I in the wrong? Did I overreact? react